Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church in Bethesda's online broadcast. Today is Sunday, April 3, 2022, the fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. If you've been here before, welcome back and a very special welcome if you're joining us for the first time. Let's begin our service today by listening to some beautiful music from our talented singers and musicians. Enjoy as we worship together. Let 
fall inside my veins The echo of my days Oh, is my soul You are good, good Oh, you are good, good Oh, you are good, good Thank you everyone for participating in that digital passing of the peace. If you're just now clicking in to join us, welcome. My name is Ryan Phipps. I'm the senior minister here at Church in Bethesda. Let's get into our lesson from the scriptures today. Last year, a friend asked me what I wanted for my birthday, and I thought about it for a minute, and then I responded, honestly, what I'd like for my birthday is to go an entire day all alone, undisturbed by anyone or anything. My friend, an extrovert, looked at me with a puzzled look on her face and she said, you mean you don't want to have a party with gifts and food and a cake? And I said, no, that sounds exhausting. And my friend continued on, but people love you. They want to celebrate you. And I said, maybe, but you asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And that's what I want. I want nothing. Silence, solitude, a good book, a craft beer, maybe even a cigar. No small talk, no dishes, no cake, no expectations. That's what I want for my birthday. 
I don't think my friend understood me then, and I don't think they ever will. But if you're wired like I am, you know exactly what I mean. Here at Church in Bethesda, we follow something along with thousands of other churches around the world called the Revised Common Lectionary. And it provides a scripture passage for every Sunday of the year. And for today, we get this psalm that you just read before I started talking. Psalm 126, verses 1 through 6, and it says this. When the Lord restored us, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore us, Lord, like the rivers in the desert May those who sow in tears reap in joy. May those who go out weeping, bearing seeds for sowing, come home with shouts of joy, carrying their crops. For today, we get this psalm. And I realize that I am to share with you today about a topic that is unnatural for me. The topic of joy. It's not that I'm not a joyful person. I'm just not good at parties. It's not that I'm not happy and content in my life. I truly am. It just doesn't look like it looks in this passage for me a lot of the times. And maybe it should. Maybe that's an area where I'm in need of growth. Maybe it's something that I'm missing. In this passage, we see celebration, restoration, laughter, shouting, all of it under the banner of joy. Then after people hear all the joy and its many expressions, the very next line says this, then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. As much as I don't like to be confronted with it, I realize that this kind of joy is being talked about as something good, as something godly, as the kind of joy that scripture puts forth for us to experience. A joy that is heard, a joy that is seen, a joy that is felt. This is what scripture teaches us joy looks like. Why? Because when joy is seen and heard, it is advertising something. Sure, this can be manufactured. We see this manufactured all over our world today. Sure, it can be faked. But that doesn't mean that it isn't a reality that is also to be discovered. I think it all has to do with how we arrive at joy in our lives, whether it's outside in or inside out. The passage says, when the Lord restored us, we were like those who dream, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Joy from the inside working its way to the outside. That's what I see at work in this passage. The joy that is seen as, and heard is coming from a realization of something on the inside. It isn't manufactured. It isn't temporary. It's something underneath that abides, that swells and then overflows out of a community, out of life. There are many outside in joys in this life for sure. 
the kind of joy that comes from obtaining objects, material things. But that joy recedes as we are confronted with the impermanence of those things. Things get old, they break down, they go out of style, they're no longer useful. And it's not wrong to find temporal joy in these things. It's only wrong to expect that joy to last forever. It's dependent upon something outside of us. And that, as we know, is always changing. But there is a deeper kind of joy, a joy that is immovable. And this kind of joy is what the psalm is pointing us to today. It's a joy that is inside out, not outside in. It's just there, regardless of our outward circumstances or experiences. And it takes discernment and work and discipline, not only to recognize that kind of joy, but to make that kind of joy the gold standard, the evaluating mechanism for all of the other joys in this life. I took my children to the YMCA this past week to play basketball during open gym. And my daughter is planning to try out for the basketball team this fall at her school. So I thought I would get her started on the basics, how to pass, how to do a layup, how to dribble, what the lines on the courts mean, etc. And it was so wonderful as her dad to see her come alive on that court. It was like she found this new thing that she loved and this light came on inside of her. In the process though of showing her how basketball works, I pulled something in my back. And the next morning, no hyperbole here, seriously, I couldn't move a muscle without excruciating pain shooting down the left side of my body. The kind of pain, and if you have back pain, you know what I'm talking about. It's the kind of pain that makes you stop breathing because even breathing hurts. And there on the floor in my apartment, I noticed something about my outer self and my inner self while pain was coursing through the meridians of my body. The thing that I noticed caused me to laugh. Why? Well, for a few reasons. Number one, I realized that I can't play basketball like I used to in my teens or my 20s. I'm getting older and things don't work like they once did. I laughed thinking how ridiculous I must look to an outside observer there laying on the floor trying to roll my body over so I could attempt to stand up. But most importantly, I laughed because I was remembering the deep connection that I shared with my daughter the day before on the basketball court. It was transcendent. It was otherworldly. It was, well, joy. And as I laid there, I didn't intend to do it, but the laughter just came out of me. And I heard myself say the words, it was totally worth it. And it was. I can hold on to that moment forever now no matter what, and there's nothing that will be able to take it away from me. Do you have anything like that in your life? I promise you that you do, if you're willing to do the work to see it. It's often in the everyday things, the things we so easily overlook. I want to encourage you to cling to that. In fact, if you really find it, you won't have to cling to it at all 
it will cling to you. Joy that is impervious to circumstance. What do people see when they look at your life? Do they see joy, real joy, or do they just see a life of you chasing things around that are fleeting? We can have real joy in this life right now, knowing that God knows the entire map of our lives, even though we can only see the next step. Maybe I can find joy in parties. Maybe I can find joy in small talk. Maybe I can find joy in many more things like these, the things that I'm not predisposed to, if I can look beyond the surface of this life and see what's at work beneath it. Maybe joy is everywhere. Why? Because I find it in myself and I bring it to whatever experience life presents to me. Maybe joy is a choice for me. Later on in the scripture, in the New Testament, in the book of 2 Corinthians, in chapter 4, it says this, and I think these words echo well that lesson from the psalm today. It reads, If our gospel is obscure to anyone, it's not because we're holding back in any way. No, it's become because some are looking the wrong way and refuse to give it serious attention. All they have eyes for are the fashionable ways of darkness. They think they can get everything that they want and that they won't have to change. They're blind to the brightness of Christ, a visible icon of the invisible God. If you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this hope around in the unadorned clay vessels of ordinary lives. We're surrounded by troubles, but unmoved. We've been thrown down, but we don't break. We're not keeping this quiet and we're not giving up. Even though we're wasting away on the outside, inwardly we are being renewed each day. These hardships are small things compared to what lies ahead. The lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things that we see now are here today and gone tomorrow. But the invisible things last forever. As we move into a time of reflection now where you may receive the Eucharist with us if you wish, as you're gathering the Eucharistic elements, I want to invite you to create a space wherever you're watching this, where you can pause for a moment and get still and reflect on this message. What if joy is so close to each of us that all we need to do is redirect our gaze to change the place that we're looking. And instead of looking all around us, wondering why the world isn't making us more happy, maybe we can find the courage to look within where the God of joy lives, where joy is not just a possibility, but a probability if we choose to see it as inside out. Let's think on these things for a moment as we get still, as we listen, as we ponder. Amen.
is Lauren. Uh, I'll be talking about the children's lesson for today. Um, so I did want to expand on Ryan, Pastor Ryan's message uh, about joy. Um, so I have a little story I'm going to read. So this is from the Sermon on the Mount uh, from Matthew 6, 9, and Luke 12. You don't need to know all that, but <laughs> I like to tell you where it comes from. Um, they called this one The Singer, and this book, I found this one at the library. It's called the Jesus Storybook Bible, and I, I really like it. I hope you will too. Um, so here we go. Wherever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. Old people, young people, all kinds of people came to see Jesus. Sick people, well people, happy people, sad people, and worried people. Lots of them worrying about lots of things. What if we don't have enough food or clothes or suppose we run out of money? What if there isn't enough and everything goes wrong and we won't be all right? What then? When Jesus saw all the people, his heart was filled with love for them. They were like a little flock of sheep that didn't have a shepherd to take care of them. So Jesus sat them all down and he talked to them. The people sat quietly on the grassy mountainside and listened. From where they sat, they could see the blue lake glittering below them and little fishing boats coming in from a night's catch. The spring air was fresh and clear. Don't you love spring? It's a very nice time of year. See those birds over there? Jesus said. Everyone looked. Little sparrows were pecking at seeds along the stony path. Where do they get their food? Perhaps they have pantries all stocked up. Cabinets full of food? Everyone laughed. Who's ever seen a bird with a bag of groceries? <laughs> Sorry, trying to show you a closer look. <laughs> no, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God knows what they need and he feeds them. And what about these wildflowers? Everyone looked. All around them, flowers were look growing. Anemones, daisies, pure white lilies. Where do they get their lovely clothes? Do they make them? Or do they go to work every day so they can buy them? Do they have closets full of clothes? Everyone laughed again. Who's ever seen a flower putting on a dress? <laughs> no, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God clothes them in royal robes of splendor. Not even a king is that well-dressed. They had never met a king, but as they gazed out over the lake, glittering and sparkling below them, the hillsides dressed in reds, purples, and golds, they felt a great burden lift from their hearts. They could not imagine anything more beautiful. Little flock, Jesus said, you are more important than birds, more important than flowers. The birds and the flowers don't sit and worry about things, and God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after the birds and the flowers, and he loves to look after you too. Jesus knew that God would always love and watch over the world he had made, everything in it, birds, flowers, trees, animals, everything, and most of all, his children. Even though people had forgotten, the birds and the flowers hadn't forgotten. They still knew their song. It was a song all of God's creation had sung to him from the very beginning. It was the song people's hearts were made to sing. God made us, he loves us, he is very pleased with us. It was why Jesus had come into the world to sing them that wonderful song, to sing it not only with his voice, but with his whole life, so that God's children could remember it and join in and sing it too. So there's the story. Um, I also wanted to share with you this activity. Uh, so this is the day the Lord has made is what it says. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's from Psalm 118, 24. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's a little picture. There is a little bird. There are some flowers and the sun is just gloriously coming out uh, in, into the sky there. Um, you can color this with your favorite colors. You can use markers. You can use colored pencils. Um, you could even try painting on it um, with watercolors. So let me know how you enjoy it and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching.